Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, which means we are having an Education Wednesday. And since I did not record my open house class, um, we're going to do this one. And actually, let me go ahead and record it right now. So uh, you guys let me know if you can hear me and see me, um, and then we can get started. Hi, everybody. All right. Hi, Miriam. Hi, Jerry. Hi, guys. So, okay. Very exciting. All right. I'm assuming you guys can hear. So, um, yeah. So what I'm going to do today is uh, basically my class that I did for open house, um, which is a lot of uh, designing and some marketing and um, things like that. So, um, so let's just jump right into it, I guess. Uh, so the first thing that I did was um, show people how I create uh, a template from a scan. And so I'm going to do that right now. Um, so we're going to go to Corel. Um, this is Corel, I think, uh, Corel 2019, and I just have it set for dark mode. But um, this is just the way I have it look, the way it looks for me. So this product, this is one of the new Unisub products. This is U4609. And um, we do have a template, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of like how I made a template if one is not available. So um, basically what I did is I scanned this in. I have 11 by, an 11 by 17 Brother scanner. And when I scan in white items, um, I, keep the, uh, I keep it open uh, because if you close the top of the scanner, then the light just reflects off the top and you won't be able to see anything. But if you keep the, uh, the top open, then you can see the outline of what you're actually working with. So that's kind of a, one of my little tips. So, all right, so I've got my product and I just need to create a template for it. So the way I do that is I go over here to my freehand tool and I click my flyout menu and I go to my Bezier tool. And then from there, I'm just gonna drop nodes. Now, keep in mind, I'm old school when I design. A lot of people do this um, slightly different than me, but this is the way I learned it and I'm not, I don't, this is just how I do it. So basically, I'm just going to go in and drop some nodes. And the more you do this, uh, the more you'll realize, uh, you know, where the nodes need to go in relation to what you're drawing. Um, so, all right, so I've got kind of like my basic shape, but now I need to curve it to match uh, the actual template. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to my shape tool, and I'm going to draw a box around everything. I'm going to right click and click on to curve. So before I made it to curve, everything is just a straight line. But once I put it to curve, then I can actually curve my lines. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Just like that. Okay. So now I've got that done, um, I do want to add my little circle here. So a little tip, if you hold down, oops, nope, not that one. If you hold down shift, I'm sorry, if you hold down control while you draw a circle, it'll draw a perfect uh, circle instead of an oval. And then, of course, if you hold down shift, when you resize it, it'll resize everything in a constrained mode. So that looks pretty good. Let's scoot it over just a little bit. I'm a perfectionist. Okay, so we have our basic shape, but we're still not done yet because we have to give it an outline. 
So in Corel, it's called a contour. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. I always have my contour open because I use it constantly. But if you don't have it open, you can go to Windows and Dockers, um, Effects, and then Contour. And that'll open this contour uh, dialog box. So normally, we recommend um, a quarter inch bleed. So to do that, I'm going to, oh, I got to click on it first. There we go. Um, so, I, and, and I also have a couple of choices here. I can contour on the inside. Um, I can uh, apply a contour fill or, excuse me, I can do an outside contour. So for this instance, I want to do an outside contour and I want to make it 0.25 inches. And then I hit apply and now I have my bleed line. But when that happens, it welds the contour and the curve together. So you have to break it apart. So to break it apart, you just hit Control K and that breaks it apart. And now your artwork is ready. Um, well, and now your template is ready to uh, have artwork uh, uh, put in it. So um, for this one, uh, I'll do a Control I, which is an import. And let's import. Um, this cute, I like this Japanese arabesque pattern. And we can just, so, and you'll notice that the stacking order here, I have this Japanese arabesque that's above this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda center it, and then I'm gonna take it and drag it down to the back so that I can see where my template is in relation to my artwork. I also kinda wanna make my artwork just a little bit smaller. Okay, and now I can power clip it inside by right clicking, going to power clip inside, and then clicking on that outer line. And I'm just about ready. All I have left to do is just fill in this center part with either a, a photo or a monogram or whatever. Of course, before I would print it, I would delete uh, that line and delete that line, and then we would print. So that's my very first one. Okay, the second request that I had was a lot of people um, asking me how I create patterns. And creating patterns um, is an incredibly tricky thing to do. But I wanted to show you guys just like a couple of tricks, um, some easy patterns that I like to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of a diamond pattern. And to do that, I'm just gonna create a square. So I'm gonna hold down control so I make sure that it's a perfect square. And then I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees. And then I'm just gonna duplicate it by hitting control D. And snapping it right there. So there was a there's an interesting thing that happened just then. So it's duplicated and I have two of them. But there's this feature up here called snap to. And if your snap to is on, then what happens is your nodes will snap to each other. So that's a perfect match. So you're not kind of guessing where it's gonna go. So then when I hit control D again, it continues to duplicate the pattern. So let's take all of these and let's fill it with this pretty blue color. Okay, now with all of these, let's do a control D again. And this time we're gonna move it here and we're gonna change the color to that. And so now we can just control D again and again and again. Again, and you basically have this cute little pattern. And of course, the colors aren't the greatest, but that's just because, you know, I don't know. If you want good colors, go to coolers.co. All right, so that's one way to do a pattern. Um, another, well, actually, let's do this. Um, another really, uh, I wouldn't say easy, but another trick that I use, especially for doing um, like chevrons, is um, is so kind of kind of the same way because I want this you know jagged pattern, 
but I'm going to use the same tool that we used for our template, but I'm going to draw a line for, for the basis of my, um, of my uh, chevron. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to my Bezier tool, and with my help of my snap to, I'm just going to click, 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 and so on and so forth. Okay, oh, of course that one moved, so let's go back here and we'll move it. Okay, so you can't really see what I did, but if I take and I delete all of these rectangles, well, there, I don't know why it's only doing one at a time. Okay, so you can kind of see, like, I have the start of a chevron pattern. Okay, um, so, but... I need to give it some depth and some dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with an outline. Now, when you left click on one of your boxes, you fill it. But when you right click on one of your color boxes, then you give it an outline. So for this one, um, I like this green color. So when you give it an outline, this box right here, this is your outline dialog box. So double click on it. And now you can change the parameters of your outline. So I can make it thick um, by giving it like an eight point width. Um, I can change the way it, the way the curve looks. Uh, there's a lot of different things that I can do here. Um, and then I can say, okay, all right. So I like this one, but we all know a chevron is not complete with one squiggly line. So let's do it again. Hit Control D. And I'm going to take it, oops, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to take, <laughs> stop it. I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it up. Now, I could move it up and it's going to move anywhere. But what I want is I want it to move in an exact straight line. So in order to do that, I'm going to hold down shift and then move it up. And that way I can only move it either straight up and down or straight side to side. I, there's no leeway. If I, so if I let go of shift, then I can kind of go wherever I want to, but when I hold down shift, it makes sure that it stays where it's supposed to go. Okay, so here's my second one. Let's change this color to, um, okay, that color looks good, and let's make it thicker. So let's go like a 16, we'll double it. That looks pretty good, okay. And actually, I kind of want to move it down a little bit. All right, and then, we're going to duplicate that again, bring it up. And basically, you guys see we have the start of a chevron pattern. So we can continue with this. You know, we can get more involved. We can go lots of different thicknesses, lots of different colors, or we can keep it, you know, this same. Uh, we can just keep it these two uh, uh, pieces here and just duplicate them over and over uh, like this. So just a couple of, um, you know, easy, uh, or just a couple of quick ways on how I create designs. Um, now, if we start talking about, uh, if we start talking about, like, repeating patterns, then we get into, like, that's like a four-day seminar, and, and that, that's a lot. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Uh, Another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is uh, working with bitmaps. So um, a lot of you have customers that will come in with a business card or, you know, they may have a logo on their website and they want you to digitize it so that you can, you know, change the colors in it and sublimate it and, you know, do what you need to do. So what I have here is three different examples of bitmaps and so this one is pretty easy but it's also pretty low resolution and I think that there's a misconception when you bring a bitmap in because it's already a bitmap that you don't have to convert it to a bitmap I know it kind of sounds like I'm talking in circles but hear me out so when I so when I was given this file you can see all the jaggedness in it and it just kind of looks 
you know, it's, it just doesn't look clean. So the first thing that I always want to do is go to bitmaps and go to convert to bitmap. And like I said, I know it's already a bitmap. But what I'm doing is I'm changing the mode of the bitmap and the DPI. So I'm going to say OK. And did anything happen? I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if anything happened. <laughs> Let's try it again. Bitmap, convert to bitmap, and say OK. Well, I don't see too much that happened. That's all right. We're going to keep going and pretend like it will look fantastic. So from there, now I want to clean it up. I want to vectorize it because let's say they want this eagle a different color or they want the mountains a different color. So from there, I'm going to go to Trace Bitmap, Outline Trace, and Detailed Logo. And that's going to bring up a new dialog box. And so the top is what we started with, and this is after the trace program has run. And we can kind of scroll in, and you can see like how much that cleaned it up. Now I still see a little bit of, um, you know, kind of dithering, and you can clean that up. You can smooth it out. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do. So we're going to say OK. And now I have two. Now I have a vectorized image, and then I have my bitmap image. So I deleted my bitmap, and now here's my vector image. So all I, can, all I have to do now is just ungroup it, and now I have the ability to change the colors or, you know, kind of just do whatever the customer needs me to do. So that's just, um, I know, you know, especially coming, doing so much graphic design, um, you know, this is a, an issue that comes up all the time, is having to adjust uh, non-vector graphics. And so hopefully this will help. So that was uh, one example. Another example is um, something like this, which, you know, is a really good logo. But when you go to convert this to a black and white bitmap, what happened, well, you know what? I, kn I know, so apparently I've already done this. Uh, Hold on. When this bitmap ca bit came over, it looked a little different. So let me fix this real quick. Adjust. Um, and let's make it lighter. Oop. Okay. All right. So when this uh, when this graphic originally came over, it looked like this, and it was it was really light. So if I were to try to create this into a black and white bitmap, what's going to happen? is nothing, right? I, I got nothing because the image was so light. So, so basically what I want to do is I want to darken this image up. So I'm going to go to Effects, Adjust, and then Brightness, Contrast, and Intensity. And what I want to do is I want to take that brightness down. And so I haven't messed with the integrity of the image just the darkness of the color. So we'll say OK. So now when I go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, black and white, this is, I can work with this. This is good. OK. So let's go to trace bitmap, outline, detailed logo, see what we get. Oh, you know what I didn't do? OK. Um, one thing is because I do want the black part or the white part to be black and vice versa, I do want to invert this. So I'm going to go to effects, adjust, what, what? Okay. So I'm going to go to effects, adjust, why is it not letting me adjust it? Um, oh, poo. Uh, let's see, convert black and white. Okay. And then effects, adjust. Why is it not letting me do this? Um, so I should be able to invert it somehow. And I don't know why it's not letting me. Uh, look at that, guys. Even, you know, even, even, even the pros have problems, I guess. Um, 
Well, what it is is that I, I'm normally using um, uh, a different style of curl draw, and um, you know, let me just give you all the excuses in the book. Okay, uh, transform, invert colors. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Okay, so so now that it's inverted, I can go to trace, outline trace, detailed logo, and there we go. Okay. So now it's going to give me a really great vector image. Make sure all my stuff is in there. Say OK. So there's my vector image. There's my bitmap image. We can delete my bitmap, bit, bitmapped image. And now I can do whatever I want to with this. So I can change, you know, the colors of this or, um, you know, just, just whatever needs to be done for this one. So. Um, now, the last one I wanted to talk about is colored graphics like this one, because sometimes, um, sometimes there's no need to convert something to black and white because, well, first off, it, you know, you're going to need these colors. Um, so if I were to convert all of this to black and white, so if I went bitmap, convert to black and white, not only did I lose some colors, but it's if I were to darken this up, it would make it just one big black and white image. And I don't want to do that. So there's other ways we can go about doing this. So we can go to bitmap, convert to bitmap. And instead of converting it to a black and white, we can convert it to an 8-bit palleted. And as you see, we didn't really lose anything. Now, it's a little trickier when you go to trace it. So let's do that. Trace, outline, detailed logo. Okay. So you see kind of like this rough stuff happening here. And that's because it's pulling every single variation of color. But you can control that. And you can control that by going here to colors and changing the numbers of colors. So I want five colors. OK, so see how well that cleaned it up? Now, I do kind of want to smooth it out just a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. OK, say OK. And now I have this, which is, once again, after I ungroup it, completely editable, where I can go in and I can change every single color. So, pretty great. Okay. All right. Um, Okie dokie. So, whew. All right. Next thing I wanted to talk about is branding. So, you guys know I am a big proponent of putting your reorder information on the back of your stuff, letting your customers know where they can buy your things from, because if you don't tell them, you know, somebody's going to see one of these beautiful things that you've made and they're going to want to buy it. So today what we're going to do is this sign right here. So this is U4792. This is our um, Chromalux outdoor metal, so this will last like three to five years outdoor. And um, we are going to do an image on the front, and at the same time, we're going to put some brand information on the back. So let's go back to Corel. I feel like I always have to tell you guys, okay, we're going back to Corel now. Okay, we're going back to me now. <laughs> All right, so. What I want to do is I want to import the template for this product. So I'm going to uh, hit Control I, and I know uh, a lot of you can just um, you know you can just open the template from uh, from the uh, from the website. That's fine. I just kind of like to just import it because it gives me more control. Okay, so the template comes over with the holes and you know some information. So I'm going to hit Control U, and I'm going to get rid of this. Ah, I said I was. What page am I on? Um, uh, 
Oh, okay, there I am. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so all, so, let me go. So this is on a locked layer. Um, it's aggravating. There we go. Let's unlock that and unprint it. Okay, all right. Okay, so I've got this um, sign, and I want to add uh, a cute graphic to it. So to do that, I'm going to hit Control I again, and this time I'm going to put this really, really cute avocado design in it because I just absolutely love it. I think it's great. So once again, that avocado shows up above everything else, so I want to take it and drag it down to the bottom. So now I can see... So now I can see where it fits inside my template. So I'm going to, so for this one, I'm not going to power clip it. For this one, I'm going to um, intersect the two of them. So to do that, I'm going to grab this uh, outer, uh, outer curve here. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on my image. And then I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to click intersect. And so basically what I have done is I have intersected um, the artwork that was underneath that rectangle. So, so there's that. Okay. Um, now I want to do something else with one of these avocados. So I'm going to ungroup this image by hitting control U and then control U again. And I'm going to grab this guy right here. And then I'm going to delete all this because I don't need it. Okay. And we're going to delete that too. All right. So now I've got my little avocado. I'm going to group it. And then I figured, you know, I want, to, I want some, some wording up here. So I'm going to say, I'm sorry life has been oops, the pits. And we're going to do... Pits Farms. All right. So now I want to change my text. Okay, guys, let's talk about changing your text real quick. Um, let me grab a, a screen. Here we go. Okay, so um, this is wordmark.it. You guys have heard me sing the praises of this particular website for quite a long time. Um, And it won't load. Well, go figure. That must be because everybody in the building is watching my live, I guess. Um, if you don't know about Word Market, it is there we go. Okay, so let's say I'm sorry, life has been the pits, and then hit enter. And what this is going to do is this is going to show me every single font that's on my computer. So no longer do I have to scroll through every single font. I can just look and I can go, okay, you know what? I like that one. I like that one. That one's pretty cool. Yeah, that one's nice too. Oop, that one, that one might work. Um, okay, also that one. And then I can look and see which one do I like the best. So fantastic time saver right there. All right, so I'm going to use, what font am I going to use today? We're going to call it, we're going to do another typewriter because I like it. All right, so I'm going to align this to the center. I'm going to, so it's selected. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select my sign. I'm going to hit C to center it, E to align it. And then I'm going to make it bigger by holding down shift and pulling it make it just a little bit bigger. All right. I love outlines. So I'm going to make a couple of outlines with my text, but I'm going to use the exact same colors that are in my graphic. And the way that I do that is with my eyedropper tool right here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pick a color. Um, I like this green color. And then when I pick it, when I pick the color, 
I automatically get a, um, a paint bucket fill tool. And so then I can just hover over my text and fill it. Okay, I like it, but it still needs a little bit more. So let's go back here. Let's, um, let's pick this color. Ooh. Let's pick this dark green and then, okay. So one of the great things about Corel is now every color that I've selected is down here. So I can play around a little bit. I can say, okay, I like that. Let's try this color for the outline. So I right click on that and then I can go over here to my outline dialog box and I can give it like a 10 point outline behind the fill, scale it. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Mm. Actually, we're going we're gonna to go a little extra. So we're going to make this a 15 point outline and we're going to make it the same blue. Oop, that is not the same blue color. We're going to make it the same blue color as the, um, the background. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D and I'm going to give it this green outline, but I'm going to change the green outline to be seven points. And so now I kind of have this, this different kind of outline effect. It's, it looks like it has three different outlines in it. It's pretty neat. Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to do with this is I want to brand it with my little pits farms. So to do that, I'm going to draw a circle, a concentric circle. So I'm going to hold down control and draw a circle. And then I'm going to hit C to center, E to align to make sure everything's aligned. Click on my pits farms, go to text, fit text to path and fit it to the path. And the great thing about fitting the text to the path is that you can literally pick any path in here at all to fit it to. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I actually like it kind of right there. So now that we've done that, it's once again welded together. We're going to hit control K to break it apart. And then we're going to delete that little uh, circle. I'm going to make this guy a little bit smaller. So he fits in there. Okay. Now, in order to get this to print correctly on the back side of this metal, I have to flip it 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to get rid of my two little blue dots. We're going to get rid of this green curve, and now it's ready to print. So. When we print it, we get something that kind of looks like this. So let me show you guys here. Cute, right? Okay, so let's get it ready to sublimate. Um, for this one, it's one minute, 30 seconds, 400 degrees with medium pressure. So I've already got my, my uh, heat press set. I'm just going to take my uh, protective, my peel coat off. Let me show you guys a trick. If you're ever having trouble getting your peel coat off, just kind of stick it underneath your heat press for just a second and it'll kind of pull it up. It makes it a lot easier to pull. Okay, now I'm just going to line it up and then I'm just going to fold it over. Crease it. And then tape it. Although I see my crease isn't, there we go, that's better. Okay. All right, now, got my tape. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape here, a piece of tape here. All right, now we're ready to go to the press. So, I've got 
piece of protective paper on the bottom. I've got my metal with my image face down, metal face up. But because metal is such a good conductor of heat, we're going to be able to do both sides at the same time. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to cover it with another sheet of protective paper. And we're going to press it for one and a half minutes for with a medium pressure. OK. All right, what's next? OK, let's continue on with the branding. So another thing that I've been really pushing lately is branding the back of coasters um, because, uh, you know, one, it's, it's a new thing that we just figured out we could do. And two, um, you know, I feel like it kind of gives the coaster a, like a finished kind of more professional look. So we will we'll do that right after this is done. Well, actually, just go ahead and do it. So I've already got, so this is U60086. This is our scalloped coaster. I really like this. I think it's super cute. And basically what I've done, show you guys in Corel. Um, well, nope, you don't get to see it because I didn't do it. So basically what I've done is I've got a cute little photo of a dog and then I also have the um, the company information that we're going to put on the back so we're just going to cut it in half because you do have to do one side and then do the other side I would recommend doing the coaster side or the um, the cork side first just because uh, you know, you, you always want your second press to be your best press. All right, this is going to be hot, so. Super cute. And then, how cute is that? Very cute, very, very cute. All right, we're gonna let that cool. Okay, so, all right. So I've got my, okay, so we were talking about doing the back of the cork first. So, um, you know, your second print is always going to kind of degrade your sublimation a little tiny bit. So I always want to do the back first because the back doesn't have to look as good as the front. When you're doing cork, make sure that you keep uh, dark colored artwork because colors are not going to show up very well. So you want it to be mostly black and really just informative. Okay. So I'm going to take my peel coat off. And with the cork, I like, I'm just going to use Pro Spray. Um, you can use tape if you want to, but. All right, so I'm just going to spray it. Line it up. And now I'm going to press it. So the instructions for the cork are the exact same instructions for the front. So it's 400 degrees, 60 seconds, medium pressure. So I want a fresh piece of protective paper. I'm going to do my image face down with my cork face up. And yes. So we're going to reset the clock to 60 seconds. Let it press. All right. Um, trying to see if I have any questions. So you're, when you're doing the t-shirts, press the back side first and then the front. Um, not that's not necessarily true with t-shirts. Um, you know, a lot of the t-shirts, um, 
most of the t-shirts you do like a small front and a large back. So um, we always normally do the small left chest first and then do the full back. So it would really depend on which one has more ink concentration. All right. Okay, guys. Um, always remember, take your transfer off immediately. Immediately. I see a lot of people out there for some reason saying to keep the transfer on until it cools, and that is really not a good idea to do. So, okay, here's the back of it. I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Okay, so I'm going to let that cool just for a minute, and then we're going to do the front of it. Okay. And then I got two more things. We're going to do a piece of stacked metal. We're going to do a full bleed mug. And then, and then that's it. So. All right. Oh, I wanted to talk about this. Um, so this is a fabric ruler. If you do not have a fabric ruler, do yourself a favor and go purchase one. This is an amazing, amazing thing because I can, you know, I can figure out the diameter of an item. Um, it's just, this is, this is what you need. This is, I actually have three of them and, and I dare someone to take one. No, I shouldn't say that because I'm going to go back and all of my tape measures are going to be gone. But definitely get yourself a fabric ruler. Okay. Hi guys. Um, all right, a little cool. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, pro spray. Now, I do wanna make sure that my orientation matches the orientation of my picture. And same thing, 60 seconds, 400 degrees, medium pressure. Good to go. Look how cute it is. Look how good this looks. I really like this silver metal. I like, you know, there's certain... Uh, graphics that just look really, really good on that silver. And so, cute. Yeah, definitely always take your transfer off. And yes, Cynthia, it is a tape measure, but instead of it being like a, met a metal tape measure, it's just a fabric tape measure. Um, I think you can get them like in the sewing section. They're basically for sewing, but I mean, it's, this is legit. Okay. So cute. Okay, so there's the front, there's the back, super cute coaster, I love it, great gift idea, just, just really, really cute. Okay. Um, D, what, should, what do you, how does one use what? Oh, the, um. Let's see, Miriam asks, have you heard that the ink on the cork bleeds on other stuff? Um, yeah, I would definitely not stack them. Um, uh, I, I would not stack them 
Um, and if you do stack them, I would put a piece of like uh, parchment or something in between them. Okay. And then, uh, so Dee, I'm not sure what your question is. Are you, um, the metal, how would you use the metal? Like, like how would I use this sign? Um, I would probably give this, I would probably like hang this up in my game room or something, you know? So this is, I mean, but this is more of, um, I've done these for like address signs and, and things like that, like, you know, like um, to put out in front of people's businesses. Um, you know, I think actually, I thought I had one. Oh yeah, I do. So this is this sign, try not to, this sign right here. Yeah, just kind of cute. I hope that answers your question. All right. Moving right along. Okay, so let's talk about, where's my mouse? Let's not talk about where's my mouse. Let's talk about stacking metal. Okay, so you guys know how much I love to stack metal. And there's a really good reason why I love it so much is because it is, you know, we talk about setting yourself apart from the crowd. We talk about increasing value. We, we talk about increasing value without increasing cost. And this is that way to do it. Hundreds of people are doing sublimation photos, photos on substrates. So set yourself apart and offer them even more. So what we're going to do today, I've got two different things. So um, one of my new uh, deals is um, not just stacking metal, but stacking like different base substrates. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So I have, I love these um, Unisub hanging signs. I think they're really cute. Uh, and so we're going to do one of these. Um, Mary Shu asked, are all metal substrates sublimatable on both sides? And I can't say for certain, but I know that the Unisub and Chromalux ones are. Um, but I, I can't speak for all metal. Um, Sherry asked, can you drill more holes in the metal? And yes, you can. Um, you're going to want to sublimate it first and then drill. Um, you know, and, and you may end up with some chipping around the hole, but I've done it before. Um, uh, some of the installations here in the office, um, I just kind of, uh, you know, drilled a hole or uh, uh, routed a hole and then like put like a fancy kind of screw. So it, you know, it kind of added to like the art of it or whatever. Um, thanks, Orville. Uh -huh, that's sweet. Um, okay, let's see. My miss. I feel like I'm missing questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Continue. All right. So, I've got my hardboard sign. This is U4845, and then I also have a four by four piece of metal, and this is our um, matte clear, and this is U4305. So they have different instructions, so we're going to have to sublimate them at different times. Let's go. You know what, guys? I got this whole other camera that I haven't even used yet. Look at that, look at that. Okay. So when I do something that kind of has a little bit of thickness like this does, um, what I like to do is kind of wrap it. So I'm just going to wrap it and then tape it and wrap it and tape it. And that just kind of like really secures it. Okay, so this one is going to go 1 minute, 45 seconds, 400 degrees, medium pressure. So, uh, protective paper on the bottom, image 
face down, substrate face up. Because hardboard is so thick, you're not going to be able to do both sides at the same time. Okay, one minute, 45 seconds, 400 degrees, medium pressure. So, well, I, I'm glad you guys are learning things. Um, oh, Tracy had a really good uh, tip. She said to put tape around where you're going to drill and it helps with the chipping. Thank you, Tracy Anderson, one of my favorite people. Guys, look at my tiny baby Sprite. Isn't that adorable? Apparently, I'm not grown up enough for a full Sprite, <laughs> so I get tiny baby ones. Okay. So we're almost there, guys. Um, so we'll do the full bleed camp mug. Uh, I do have my CM11 right here, and I just have this kind of design that I did. Um, I think the hardest, well, uh, you know, you do have to cut these out um, if you know about um, using silhouette and being able to set up registration marks and cut lines and things like that then you can you know you can definitely run this through your cutter and cut it out but uh, always make sure you use really sharp scissors uh, guys a sharp pair of scissors is it, it makes it makes a difference trust me For some reason, the hardboard always likes to kind of stick to the top, so I just give it a second. All right, let's go back over to this camera. Doesn't that look great? Look at that. So. Let that cool, but now we're going to do this piece. So, um, so I did this as kind of like a graduation gift, and so like I figured that would be like her graduation photo, and then this would be um, her name and the class. So let's go ahead and take the protective pepper off, protective peel coat off again. Okay, and we're just going to line it up and tape it. All right, and we're going to press this for not very long. Let's see, 60 seconds, 400 degrees. medium pressure. Okay. All right. So we let that cool. And while that's cooling, we are going to, um, to get, to get it ready. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen me do this before, but I have the worst luck with this double-sided tape. So if you are doing this for a customer, do not use double-sided tape. Use some type of industrial grade adhesive like E6000 or something like that. But E6000 um, takes quite a while to dry and so, uh, so I don't have time to let it dry so I'm just gonna use this double-sided tape. This is not a permanent solution. 
this is a permanent solution, this E6000. So remember that. Oh no! Beautiful. All right. So, actually, we're going to let that cool. We're going to go back to this. All right. So, I've got everything cut out except for the little handle holes. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to just wrap this around. And tape it. Maybe a little better, okay. So I'm going to see if you guys can see better in this camera. Um, oops. Where is Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if I can make this a little bit better for you guys. Look at that. Okay. Let's see if we can go one more. All right. So I've got it matched up, and now I'm going to place a piece of tape up here at the top, and I'm going to place a piece of tape down here at the bottom, and then I'm also going to place a piece of top right a piece a piece of tape right here underneath the handle. Okay, so just like that. Now, now I need to use my shrink wrap. So for this, I'm using the SF79 Subla Shrink. And um, Marishu asked, am I overlapping or just butting up? And no, I am overlapping. Uh, you definitely want to overlap because the heat will make the steel contract uh, and expand, and so you definitely want it to overlap. All right, so I'm cutting a hole about an inch from the bottom to, so my handle can go through it. Okay, and then I'm going to pull my handle through. Now... Most important is to tape up around the handle. So I'm going to place a, quite a long piece of tape here. Okay, I'm going to place quite a long piece of tape down here on the bottom. And then I'm also going to place a long piece of tape through the center. Okay. All right. Now, with this excess, you can cut it off and reuse it, or I just kind of tuck it in. Okay. All right. Now, turn my heat press off so we don't blow a breaker. And... And we get to, we get to gun it up. Okay. So... My advice is to heat shrink everything and do the handle part last.
Okay. So you guys can kind of see, right, Just like that. Okay. So we're going to put this in the oven. This is my Hamilton Beach convection oven. I've got my inter internal thermometer in there. Guys, you cannot do cups without an internal thermometer in your oven. It's not going to work. It's not going to, it is, okay. it's not going to work. All right, so it's in there. 360 degrees, we're going to go six minutes. Let's set it in. Whew. Start my timer, which is somewhere. There we go. And start. All right. Okay, so for the next six minutes, let's put together our piece. Okay. All right, so this is pretty, it's, it's still kind of warm, but it's okay for what we need to do. I've got my unisub mounting block, and I'm going to take one side of it, or one piece of the protective um, coating off the tape, and I'm just going to kind of stick it on this piece. Okay, and now I'm going to take this protective wrapping off of this. There we go. Okay. All right. And now I just kind of want to just line it up kind of where I feel like it should go so and the great thing about using e6000 is because it is not a permanent immediate set you can move it around a little bit so there we go and then of course you know with the ribbon in it I think this would be like a really really cute uh, graduation gift um, you know, especially with the senior portrait and, you know, you could put like the school logo or mascot or, um, you know, I mean, you can dress it up however your customer wants. There you go. How cute is that? I mean, this is a $50 gift all day. Really cute. All right. Okay, so we're about a little over halfway through. So yeah, um, that's right. It does not work without the extra temperature gauge in the oven. The dials are not accurate. Are not accurate. Um, somebody asked about where can we find good images. Uh, I use Pexels.com. Um, Pexels is 100% royalty free and as a matter of fact I think that may be where I got this image from. If not I got it from iStock. You do pay a lot of money for iStock but you know we it's relevant to us so it, it works. Um, so yes wedding pictures absolutely. Um, I did a wedding picture not too long ago um, for the NBM uh, trade show. Which, speaking of that, guys, uh, Wednesday, August the 12th, I think, I'm going to be doing another class for the NBM show. It's uh, how to sublimate and sell to the school market. Um, so that's going to be a really fun uh, web, uh, uh, trade show. It's free. Uh, we'll be sending out an email soon to show you, tell you how to register and sign up and all that good stuff. Um, also, uh, very, 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 very uh, exciting is that Doug and I will be going live on Friday to show the new material that we have from Forever. So the Forever Subla Light, which is sublimation to cotton, the Forever Subla Light Glitter, which is glitter sublimation to cotton, the Subla Dark Glitter, which is uh, sublimation glitter to dark uh, garments, um, and also the hot stamp foil 
which guys, if you have not heard me talk about it yet, it is legitimately my new most favorite thing that we have. It is so incredibly cool. So be looking out for that. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And even more exciting is next Wednesday, I will be going live with Joe and Bo from Caesar, and we're going to talk about how you can increase the value of your products by adding vinyl to your sublimated products. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, those guys are amazing. Uh, if you don't follow Caesar's page, you definitely should. Um, and, and yes, yeah, so we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. And yeah, how much time we got left? 55 seconds. No way. Okay. Um, one of the things that I talk about with uh, doing the um, sub shrink in the oven is if you look and you can see your image starting to come through your sub shrink, then nine times out of 10, your image uh, is complete. Your sublimation is complete. Um, so that, that's a good, uh, you know, kind of uh, estimate on if, you're, if your thing is done or not. How did you learn about all of this stuff, Sprite? <laughs> I have been doing this for a long time, and I also have a passion for it. And I feel like when you have a passion for something, learning about it is, it's like a hobby, you know? So that's what I do. Um, all right, we got a little bit left, a little bit left to go. Oh, and that sound means we're done. Um, you know, I may it may need to go a little bit longer. Yeah, we're going to let it go probably like another 30 seconds. Ouch. And, uh, and, and then we'll see. So, yeah, guys. Um, oh, and so the website was Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, not Pixels, Pexels.com. Uh, does it affect the oven temp if you put multiple mugs in? Well, in, you know, it's going to affect, it's not going to affect the temp, but it's going to affect the dwell time. So that the amount of time that you have the mugs in, the more surface area you're putting in there, the more time you need to allow it. And you also have to make sure that you have enough uh, room in between all of the mugs so that air can circulate. Uh, funny monkey, which is an awesome, fun, oh, funny money. Okay. Asked, do you print an RGB? And yes, um, we design and print an RGB. Uh, our printers are CMYK printers, but, uh, but yeah, we, we design and print everything in RGB. Um, a question about the hot stamp foil, if it is okay. It's okay. Thoughts on the white toner printer? Oh, man, it's cool. That's my thoughts on that. I wish I had, uh, I wish I had one to play with. Doug's the lucky one. All right. <sighs> Moment of truth. So do you guys get nervous when you um, go to, like, take your, uh, your uh, transfer off, ouch, off your stuff? Because uh, try doing it live in front of a whole bunch of people. <laughs> I know. Good guys, so there we go. You've got under the handle all the way around. Let me put another glove on so I don't burn myself. Look at that. Just, I mean, you know, that's so cool.
And you know, like I said, we, we always talk about offering things no other people, nobody else can, nobody else does. This is one of those things, the stacked metal, the full bleed mugs. You know, uh, if I wanted to, I could have put an image on the handle there. It's just amazing, just amazing. All right, guys, that's all I have today. Uh, I want to thank you very much for watching. Um, I want to thank you all for, uh, you know, participating in our open house. If you did, um, if you didn't, that's okay. Go to our YouTube page. All of our classes have been uploaded. Um, check out me and Doug on Friday. Check out me, Bo, and Joe next Wednesday. This is Sprite from Condi Systems. Happy sublimating, guys. <laughs>